Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 15, Varieties of Malware. In this video, we are going to discuss different kinds of malicious software. By malicious, we mean that this software is intended to harm computer users, to irritate them, or to steal information from them. In cybersecurity lingo, we combine the words malicious and software together into a single word, malware. In this lecture, I'm going to define several common varieties of malware, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and bots. The first type of malware that I'm going to talk about is viruses. Most of you have probably heard the term computer virus before, but what exactly is a computer virus? In the traditional definition, a computer virus is an unwanted program that attaches itself onto a host file on a computer. This is similar to real biological viruses, which attach themselves to host cells in a body. There is another analogy between computer viruses and biological viruses based on the way that they spread between hosts. Viruses cannot spread from person to person unless those two people interact somehow. For example, by sneezing on one another. <coughs> computer viruses work in a similar way. A computer virus copies itself, but those copies don't just spread to new computers on their own. Instead, a host must do the spreading somehow. There are many ways that computer users can accidentally spread computer viruses. Some common ones include sharing infected USB devices, sharing infected files on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks, or sharing infected files in emails. The second type of malware that I'm going to talk about is worms. On the traditional definition, worms are self-sufficient programs. We just saw that viruses live in host files on a computer. But worms are programs that hide out on a computer without the aid of a host file. A virus is just a string of malicious code that can't function without a host, but a worm is its own separate program. Unlike viruses, worms are often able to spread themselves throughout a computer network. When a worm becomes attached to a computer, it normally tries to spread to all the other computers on the same network as the original host computer. It doesn't matter if it's a wired network or a wireless network. A worm can spread itself using either kind. In fact, the network itself is often the target of a worm. The idea is that by infecting all or many of the computers on a network, a worm can slow down the network itself, rendering the network useless. The third type of malware that I'm going to talk about here is Trojan horses. Trojan horses are like worms in that they are normally independent programs that run on your computer. They don't need to attach themselves to a host file in the same way that viruses do. But Trojan horses don't necessarily spread like worms do. What makes Trojan horses unique is that they spread by tricking computer users into voluntarily downloading them. A Trojan horse will appear to be some kind of valuable computer file, but when users download that file, they receive malware that they weren't expecting. Just as the Trojan horse of Greek mythology appeared to be a gift, but was actually filled with menacing Greek raiders, Trojan horse software will appear to be an enticing download, but it will be full of menacing malware. The fourth type of malware that I'm going to talk about here is bots. Bot is short for robot. Most of the time, when we think of robots, we think of physical machines that can perform tasks that are normally performed by human beings. The term bot in cybersecurity lingo is similar. A bot is a malicious program that automatically performs functions on your computer that are normally performed by the user. For example, a bot might send emails, or pull up web pages, or change your computer settings, or many other things, and all that without the user's permission. Now, sometimes a bot is simply programmed to do those things on its own without any input, but sometimes bots are actually capable of receiving commands from a third-party user called a bot master. 
Bot masters use bots to control your computer without your consent or even your awareness. Like a worm, bots can replicate themselves. However, unlike a worm, a bot is usually very careful about replication. Worms are normally programmed to replicate very quickly. The rapid spread of a worm can create so much traffic on a computer network that the network slows down or completely crashes. Indeed, this is often the purpose of worms, to damage a network. Bots, on the other hand, usually replicate relatively slowly so that they can avoid being noticed. Similarly, bots are frequently designed so that they will run on a computer completely undetected. Now, viruses are normally designed to damage a computer. But bots are designed to run smoothly along with other computer programs. But that doesn't mean that bots aren't harmful. A bot can receive commands from a remote bot master, and so a bot gives partial control of your computer over to some other user at some other location. And that can be a very harmful thing. Throughout this video, I've referred to four distinct types of malware. Viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and bots. However, in the real world, boundaries are fuzzy between all the different kinds of malware. It can be difficult to categorize real pieces of malware as just viruses or just worms. Sometimes, a piece of malware will attach itself to a file, like a virus does but it will have the capacity to spread itself like a worm does. Or maybe it will be a Trojan horse download that leaves a bot on your computer. Now, the term virus has become the catch-all term for discussing malware in casual conversation. But as you can see, there are a great many varieties of malware out there, each with their own purposes, their own strengths, and their own weaknesses. Okay, that's all the further we'll go in this video. In the next lesson, we'll talk more about what malware can do to your computer.